I know, I know, I know, I did a Netflix film last week, but Netflix recently have been going all out to making proper movies. Are they any good though? Well, I still can find 10 things wrong with. So that's what I'm gonna discuss this week. 10 things wrong with Unforgivable, and I'm your host, Berryman. The Unforgivable is a 2021 drama film. It tells the story of Ruth Slater, who after 20 years is released from prison from killing a cop, and she wants to make a new start with her sister. However, the sins of her past are always following her. The film itself, when it was reviewed, it on general is mixed to average, maybe lower. I mean, there's lots of things that they've said wrong with it, but what have I, the nitpicking YouTuber, said that's wrong with the film? Well, allow me to discuss 10 things wrong with Unforgivable. Number 10, missing Easter eggs. I must admit I found this annoying because during watching this film I was waiting to see a couple of little Easter eggs, especially towards the Netflix part of the MCU. I know, I know, the MCU's in everything. But hear me out, the bloke who plays Kingpin, he's in this film, is quite a major part. Hell, this even had the Punisher. Violet Davis, who, granted, started off the Civil War in Civil War, she was also in Luke Cage. There's so many actors that were in the Netflix version of the MCU, and not one, not one, easy wheezy tiny little Easter egg. Seriously, if I made this film and I had this cast, I wouldn't be able to resist. Number nine, TV show. One of the impressions that I got from this film was it didn't really seem to fit being a big screen film. To me, this was more of a two, three, four part of miniseries where you could have really got behind and understood and fully fleshed out every character. And I got that impression from this film quite a lot. Now, I thought that while watching the film, now after watching the film, I did a bit of research and found out this is actually based on a UK TV series called Unforgiven. Now, they didn't want to keep the same name because of the Clint Eastwood film, but that's why this film has that TV feel rather than a cinematic feel because you've taken a TV show, quite a successful TV show, I might add, and put it on the big screen, and it didn't quite work. Number eight, pacing. Now, one thing I'm not going to moan about is the overall storytelling, because the story itself is quite good, it's quite engaging, there's some eating, eating, niggly little bits, we will come up in this video a bit later. But overall, the pacing of this film was a bit slow. Now, luckily, it had a good enough story to keep me engaged, but yeah, the pacing itself could have been that little bit better just to help a little bit. I was struggling to watch this film. Number seven, too many styles. Now, watching this film, you get the impression of what style of film, but you don't. I mean, overall, it is a drama film, end of. But what style of drama? Well, it starts off being a bit of a redemption arc and a redemption story, how Ruth is going to rebuild her life after prison. Okay, I can get on with that. Then all of a sudden, it swaps, and it's a legal drama. Okay, bit confusing, but I can get onto the board that. And then all of a sudden, it's a kidnapping story. <laughs> so, Keep to one, it makes this film, while watching it, a very, very jarring, where it just swaps styles like that. Number six, Unforgivable. So this film's called Unforgivable, and it tells the story of Ruth trying to rebuild her life after 20 years in prison. Hell, even the spiel on Netflix say that people cannot forget her past, which was great. I actually like the idea of that, and I can see that being engaging except it wasn't really the main focus of this film. People didn't really seem to be that bothered. She never really told anyone, and she seemed to like have her life quite well. Hell, she had two jobs. Most convicts or ex-convicts struggled to get one job, yet she had two. She started building up a budding relationship with someone, although he turned away when he found out who she was. But I did feel that the unforgivable, the trauma of her past and people to forgive and forget her past, it was in the background side of things and it wasn't really a main focus, even though it is the title of the film. Number five, Stranger Danger. Seriously, we all tell our kids, 
don't talk to strangers, don't talk to strangers. That's what, that's what kids are growing up with. So as an adult, you would think you would know better. However, Ruth is stood outside her old house for quite some time. They know, the people now living in this house notice her and go and talk to her. Red flag straight away, but hey ho, there's a weirdo standing at the other side of the field looking at my house. I'll go and talk to them. Later on, as they're talking, he invites this woman, who is creepily staring at your house, into the house. What? No. No one in a million years would ever do that. That is just wrong and it's just stupid. And what sort of impression are you giving children? Not that children should be watching this film. Number four, wrong priorities. So the bad guy of this film, he comes home to find his baby screaming its head off in its bedroom. So he goes and picks his baby up like any father would do. I understand that. He goes into his bedroom to find his wife banging his brother. Steve then does the sensible thing. He calms his child down and goes and puts the child back in the baby's bed. Great. Do you know what? I'm actually sort of liking this guy, even though he wants to do a revenge thing. I sort of like this guy. Puts his child priority first. Then he goes and beats the hell out of his um, brother, which is understandable. While his missus then goes to the baby and then brings the baby in where these two blokes are fighting. So, let me get this straight. While you're humping someone else, you're letting your child scream its head off in another, another room. No, you don't do that. If You make sure either the child's asleep if you're having an affair or you make your child a priority. I don't like this woman at all. Really don't. Not only did you not neglect your child, you then bring your child into where these two blokes are fighting. You are endangering your child. Woman, you need to have your head screwed on. Put your children first, like Steve did. Number three, stupid bad guy. I'm now gonna feel a bit bad because I've just literally just praised Steve in the last entry and now I'm gonna call him stupid. So to try and get revenge on Ruth, he goes and kidnaps his, her sister. So he kidnaps this girl, takes her one place and like holds her hostage. At no point did Steve actually realize that this girl was under 20. Couldn't be his, her, Ruth's sister, she's too young. The sister would have to be over 20 years old. You didn't think that through. Seriously, you're getting revenge on something that happened over 20 years ago and you're actually kidnapping a teenager. Doesn't work. And Steve, you're doing so well. You're a bad guy I could get behind and then you do something stupid like that. Number two, ending. As much as I did like this story, and as I said, I've not really criticized the story yet, I didn't really get on the ending. Now, hear me out. So the ending, everyone's safe. Ruth finally meets her sister, they hug. That's it, end film. What happened next? I would have liked one scene, not a Lord of the Rings thing where you get another like an hour of ending. One scene, why are they hugging? Is it because she saved her sister or because she knows their sisters? There's a couple of questions that could be answered just to really make this film really that impactful. Are they going to have a relationship? Do they forgive her? What happens next? One scene could have answered all of these questions. And I do think the film suffers slightly because those questions have not been answered. Number one, could have been avoided. Now, this one is truly and utterly spoiler filled. And it, this film has, what I love, a brilliant twist ending. So it turns out that Ruth did not actually kill the cop. It was her sister. And she's done all this to protect her sister. Great, I actually get on board with that and you would do that. Seriously, if you love someone so much and it was an accident, you would take the fall for it. I get that. Except Ruth's sister was five when this happened. This also is in the state of Washington, which means Ruth's sister could not be prosecuted. Now, everyone could come up with the argument when no one would believe this five-year-old would sh could have shot. Yes, I sort of get that. However, one, there would have been no gunpowder residue on Ruth's hands. Two, Ruth's sister had the marks on her face where a shotgun went off in her face. There's enough evidence to prove that Ruth's sister did it. So, she would never have got prosecuted. You've wasted 20 years of your life for nothing. 
your sister would not have gone to jail. Yes, she would have gone into care, but that would have happened, that happened anyway. But you could have kept in touch with your sister. You could have still had a relationship with your sister, but you didn't really think your plan through. And you, Ruth, wasted 20 years of your life for nothing. Final thoughts. Let's talk about what I think of this film. Well, ultimately, this is actually a really good film. It's a fantastic story, just pacing problems. And that is probably the only negative I can actually say about this film. We'll start off with the acting. Oh my God, I have never seen Sandra Bullock act so well before in her life. This was top notch. And the best thing is, it's not Sandra Bullock. I watched this film and I cannot see Sandra Bullock. I can actually see Ruth Slater and I can feel and understand the pain, emotion, anguish this woman's going through. Sandra Bullock, this is the best you've ever done in your life. And it's on Netflix. That's the now negative side of things. Everyone else's acting was brilliant. Vincent uh, Viola as the uh, people that lived in the old house, great. You bought their stories. Josh, you understood he likes this girl, realizes what she is, and knows he can't be with her and steps away. And you buy her. Every actor is amazing. There's not one, well, there is a standout performance and it has to be Sandra Bullock, but everyone was fantastic. The music was nothing to shout about, but it did its job how it's supposed to be. The cinematography, great. The film looked good. There's nothing wrong with it except for the pacing, which is the only negative. So if you want to sit down and watch a really good TV miniseries, because end of the day, that's what this film is, this film is perfect. This film is actually a really good Netflix and chill film. And I'm being serious. But what am I going to rank it? As I said, there are some niggly things making it. It's never going to be a standout film. But ultimately, it's a good film to sit down and watch and Hell, it could be a good date night movie. I don't know. Depends what you're into. But I am going to give this a 7 out of 10 berries. I think I'm being a little bit nice this week. What do you think? Have you seen this film? What did you think of this film? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Am I being too nice or am I being too harsh? Let me know in the comments below. On to next week. Well, we've done a couple of Netflix films, so we're going to move away from that. And we're going to go back to the MCU, which some reporters say is the worst MCU film ever. Now, I've not long done a Marvel worst or best list, so go and please check that film out. And this film wasn't the lowest MCU film, but it was near the bottom. If you want to know what film I'm talking about, well, come back next Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.